Okay, how's it going? Theoretical probably. So a brand new unit. I'm a little bit behind on videos. Um, but let me try to catch up today by making a couple. So the first one we're going to do is to look at section 1.2 from your text. What we're calling unit 3, days 1 and 2. So this took about two days to work on. Not really, but kind of. And it's theoretical probability. So jump into theoretical, then back to experimental and talking about how experimental and theoretical have anything to do with each other. So then we'll get into mutual exclusive events, independent events, dependent events. And then we'll go back and look at the probability of combinations and permutations. So but real quick, let's just get going. So here's a tree about flipping a coin twice. And we'll do, this is going to be heavy on terms. Um, so there you flip a coin and you get a head and a head. And you get a head and a tail following this through. Remember, we call this the terminal branches, tail and a head and a tail and a tail. So this one here, the sample space, and so we flip a coin twice, we call that an experiment. So an experiment, and probably you, you will, we do what we call experiments. Don't get confused with science experiments. Ex flipping a coin is an experiment, and that sort of thing. And what happens is after you run an experiment, what, hap what could happen, what you see um, and observe is called the sample space. So in this case, we have two heads, a head and a tail, tail and a head, and tail and a tail. That's your sample space, okay? And that's that. And then you come back and an event is a subset of a sample space. So if I wanted to look at this, we look here and we say, if I want to flip two heads, what's that look like? That's set notation. So let me just try to see. That's the fancy brackets. Remember these? Click the duck kind of. That's two heads. That's HH. Close it. Flipping one head and one tail. That's HT comma TH. Okay. So just some, some kind of terms to go through. As we keep going here, we want to talk about things like this. If we had two dice, and the number add up to five, what's the sample space there, or what's the event space there, add up to five, you can do that by rolling a one and a four, you can do that by rolling a two and a three, and remember with dice, just with like with coins, the first roll and the second roll are not the same, so you can think of rolling the same coin twice, or you can think about rolling like a red uh, a die and a blue die, okay? So that's that. The coins, you're going to have to know that we made a table a bunch of times where you roll the dice and we talk about the totals. So one and one is two, and then you make this table up for the totals all the way through. And it looks something like this. It starts off as 12 down here and that sort of thing. So we've done that a bunch of times in class. Um, and I will refer to that as we go on. So we talk about probability now. So that's the likelihood of something happening. So if you want to talk about the likelihood of, of rolling a nine, if, we, if I did that table properly, you would notice that there were four ways to roll a nine. 3, 6, 4, 5, 5, 4, 6, 3. So the probability of rolling a 9 would be 4 out of 36. Now, we write that like that, and we'll talk about how, how to change that from that version to different versions as we go on. In general, we call this theoretical probability. So that's theoretical probability. That, that's what I typed there. And that is NA. We call this, your textbook calls this NA over NS. And that's the size of the event. Uh, space over the total space. So the number of ways what you're looking for can happen divided by the number of ways anything can happen, right? So here, success, we can also talk about success. If I'm looking here for the probability of rolling a nine, right? So rolling a nine, success would be rolling a nine. And I say, how many ways can I roll a nine? If I look at my table, there are four different ways to roll a nine. And how many different roll combinations are there? The answer is 36. So the answer is 4 out of 36. That's how you're going to do all of your probability questions. You want to know the number of ways what you're looking for can happen divided by the number of ways anything can happen. Okay? So probability can be expressed in several ways. Percents, fractions. Okay, so percents, fractions, and decimals. So let's stick with this one. 4 over 36 is a fraction. We can also express it in lowest terms as 1 ninth. And from there, we can go and throw that in the calculator to figure out that's 0 0.11. Now, that's actually 0 0.11111. It doesn't stop. It's repeating. But when we express it as a decimal, which is the most common way to express probabilities, we terminate the decimal after two, dec two, two numbers. So even if you have, sometimes you'll be lucky and you might get a quarter that turns into 0 0.25. But what I was going to say is even if you have a number that ends there, like 0 0.5, put a 0 at the end there. So 0 0.50. Okay, um, and then any other number you're going to cut off. So 0 0.3333, you cut off there, you round properly. If you had 0 0.66666, you round that to 0 0.67. So that's that. Multiply that by 100 and you get 11%. And I know it's not exactly 11%. The only exact answers would be the fractions. Everything else will be an estimate, but we're fine with that. Okay, fractions are the best, but fractions get confusing. 
percents, people understand. 12 percent is smaller than 13, smaller than 14. If I said 8 twelfths and 7 nineteenths and 8 fourteenths and 11 30 seconds, and I said line them up real quick, you'd have a hard time doing that, right? But not if I said 11 percent, 12 percent, 13 percent, 40 percent. Okay, so um, that's that. And here we tend to use decimal more often, so that's kind of what happened here, okay? Uh, just showing that again. So here we're going to talk about flipping two heads in a row. Uh, so back, sorry, we we'll go back and look at that tree that we already drew, okay? And we talk about the probability of flipping two heads. There's only one way to do that. So how many ways can you flip two heads? It's just head, head. So there's one way to do that. And how many ways can you flip two coins? There are four different outcomes for that. So it's one quarter. One quarter is 0 0.25. You can also write that as 25% if you feel like it. But most of the time, you're going to be writing it in this form. We call it decimal form. I'm not a huge fan of that term, but sometimes it's called that. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? That's what I want to write here. The biggest value here, PA, the pos sorry, the possible values of PA. So what that what I meant here was if you have PA, the biggest it can be is one and the smallest it can be is zero. Because if you have a fraction that is like three over three, that's a hundred uh hundred percent. Like if, if if something can always happen, as a percent it's hundred percent, but as a decimal, it's one. Three divided by three is one. So that's how you get the one. You can have something not happen. You can have an experiment, that, you know, like if I said to you, how many ways can I roll a nine with one die? The answer is none, right? Now, is that a, a stupid question or a bad question? Maybe. But if I ask that, the probability of rolling a nine when you roll one die, it's zero out of six or zero out of whatever. And then you're going to get zero. And that's here. That's where you get that. Okay. We keep going here. This is called a complement. This is talking about something not happening. So if I said here, the probability of something um, happening, I could also talk about it not happening. And if you add those probabilities together, the, the total of that is one. So for example, if you say there's a 50% chance of it raining tonight, or let's not say 50, there's a 70% chance of it raining tonight, you could also say it's a 30% chance of not raining tonight, okay? And together, 70 plus 30 is 100%. You could talk about that in decimal form. That's a 0 0.70 plus a 0.30, and that's one as a total. So together, the, uh, the probability of something happening and the probability of it not happening are one. You can rearrange that as PA is equal to 1 minus PA uh, prime. We call that prime. I don't know if I mentioned that. And this is PA prime is equal to 1 minus PA. So if you know 1, to get the other, you subtract the number 1 from your odds. So I just did that. I said if it's 70%, uh, 0 0.07 chance of this, right? And I have 1 here, I subtract that and I get uh, 0 0.30 for, for the, the probability of not writing. Okay, so the probability of not flipping two heads in a row, that's the complement. Okay, so that's one minus a quarter or one minus, you want to write that as a decimal, that's fine. And that's 0 0.75. Okay, and if you want go back and check your tree, you'll notice that that is exactly true. So what odds? Odds odds get a little confusing. I, I find them a little bit tricky, to tell you the truth. Maybe I make them too complicated. I don't know. But the odds of something happening can be expressed as the ratio of something happening to the ratio, uh, sorry, the ratio of something happening to sorry, the ratio of the probability of something happening to the probability of it not happening. So for example, here, if I want to talk about the, the odds of flipping two heads in a row, I said that there's a 0 0.25 probability or 0 0.25 chance that it will, that I can do that. And there's a 0 0.75 that the complement occurs, right? These add up to one, we said 0 0.25 and 0 0.75. Well, what you're going to do is now write these like this, 0 0.25 two, it's a colon, 0 0.75 and then you can kind of treat this what you kind of think of this as a fraction we're not going to write it like this we're going to write it so if i had this as a fraction 25 over 75 in lowest terms that's 1 over 3 and that's the same thing we're going to do here we can rewrite it like this divide each by 25 and write it in lowest terms essentially we don't like to have uh, odds we don't express odds like this we write them like i said in lowest terms and lowest terms means uh, even though 0 0.25 is a lower number than 1, lowest term really means, I guess, by definition, would be the biggest integer, or sort of the smallest integers that work in a fraction form. Okay, so it does get confusing. Because if I came back, I think there's some questions about, about this in your text. If I came back and worked the other way around here and said, hey, there is a, uh, you know, a 90% chance that this is going to happen, what are the odds against it happening or the odds of it happening let's let's say this there's a 90 percent chance something will happen what are the odds against it happening so this is pa pa primed is 10 percent right 
So as a decimal, we can look at them, we could do this as a decimal, 0 0.10 and 0 0.90. We can do it either way, it won't matter. So what I want is the odds against it happening. So that's PA primed to PA, and that is 0 0.90 to 0 0.10, which I can rewrite as 90 and 10 in the lowest terms, that's 9 to 1. So it's 9 to 1 against it happening. Okay, so... So some of the terminology gets a little confusing here, but that's how you set that up. If you want to work the other way around, let's say I had this here, and, and the odds of something happening were 9 to 1, um, and I want to talk about the percent here, you're, you're going to immediately want to say it's, it's 1 over 9, right, as your answer. But the truth is, it's not. What you're going to do here, if it's 9 to 1, what you're going to do here is you're going to put the 1 here, and then on the bottom you're going to put 9 plus 1, which is 1 over 10, which is 10%. Okay, so you're going to have to put both of them in the denominator, and that's how we got the 10% over here, right? So that's what we're using. Okay, I, I, it's a little tricky. Try your homework, okay? Set up this way, and hopefully that makes sense. If not, come and ask me a question tomorrow in class. Take care.